I get a heck of a lot of parcels delivered here to the house, but on occasion I've missed those deliveries because I just haven't heard the chap quietly knocking away at the front door while I've been all the way back here in the studio doing some work. So I thought I'll get myself one of those doorbells with the remote ringer unit so I can keep that in here and then I'll never miss another delivery. But then I thought, well, if I'm doing that, I might as well go all out and get something that I can show in a video review. So I went ahead and got myself the Ring Wi-Fi video doorbell. Now, during the course of the video, you'll see how it works and what it does. But ultimately, I've had this thing for perhaps about six weeks now, and I've decided to take it back down again and just replace it with a plain old doorbell. So you'll find out why I came to that decision. Anyway, let's get on with the rest of the video. So you may be wondering what kind of features does a ring video doorbell give you that a normal old doorbell doesn't? Well, on this one, when someone outside presses the button, it's your smartphone that rings. And you can see on your smartphone, using the video camera on the device, who's stood outside. And if you want, you can initiate a two-way conversation with them over the loudspeaker. In addition, it records video of the people that have come and gone, and it'll save that up in the cloud for a small fee. And there's sort of motion activation as well, so it's kind of a secure security device in a way. Overall though, the main idea I suppose it seems to be to appear that you're in when you might actually be out and just talking to the person on your phone through a mobile network. Now inside the box, all nicely laid out, you get all the things you need to put this up on your wall other than your power drill of course to put that drill bit into. But as you can see we've got everything else we need here and you can wire it into an existing connection for an outside doorbell, a wired connection if you want, or you can run it off batteries. Now my house doesn't have a wired doorbell so I had to run mine off batteries and more about that later on. Notice this back plate here, this is the bit that stays on the wall, this has these little clips on it and then the big unit here slides onto that, clicks onto it and attaches at the bottom, secures with these two little uh, security screws here. They provide you with a special screwdriver for those so you don't want to lose that. However, if somebody does for some reason steal your doorbell, it's quite an expensive device, you can imagine it happening, they're kind enough and brave enough to say that they'll replace it for free. Now I can't say exactly how long the battery will last, however it seems to last quite a long time. It hardly ran down at all in all the time I was using it. However you charge it through the micro USB port on the back there and as it's charging you see the different indicators on here. One thing to point out, if you do manage to wire it in rather than use it on batteries, that little ring around the button there will be illuminated which is a nice little feature at night time. Now you download the app which is available for iOS or Android or Windows and you press that button there, it's the usual thing, you connect it up to your Wi-Fi network, you go through the uh, app on your phone and tell it what your Wi-Fi password is and then the device connects up to your network. Also you've got video instructions here which is a nice little feature showing you how to install it on your wall, so all very simple as far as that goes. Now if you plan on saving the videos that the camera has previously recorded for up to six months in the cloud you're going to have to pay a fee which is $3 per month or $30 annually per ring device. Now, if you don't do that, you'll still be able to see the person outside on the video. It's just there'll be no recording of the events. Now, this is what the app looks like. You can see we've got a couple of options here to turn off the ring alerts and the motion alerts. Also, the battery at the top there, you'll get an alert on that if the battery is running down. And then you can go into the motion sensor feature and... Uh, take out certain regions if there's a person next door that you don't want it to go off every time they go up and down their drive but you can also move it away from your house up to 30 feet or move it in to your house so that it's less likely to get activated by someone walking past on the footpath but this is what it looks like when it is triggered So you get that wind chime sound on your phone and also you get the notification pop up and then when someone presses the bell So it rings both outside and on your phone. They get the little blue flashing light. You get the notification. If you click the open button, you're able to see the person that's outside and also hear what they're saying about you. And if you want, you can press talk and communicate with them while they're stood outside your house. Even if you're on your phone on a mobile network and you're not in your house, you can still do that. So I put the ring unit on my house and for the first 30 days you get the free cloud recording so I was able to utilize that and test that out and what happens is you get the 
activities shown here you get either all the activities or when someone's pressed the button or when the motion's been activated and for each of those you can then click on them and get the video of that particular event so just showing you that on screen now now i've actually put it in my garage for these test shots because i didn't really want to be standing outside my house sort of talking and demonstrating things but you get the idea now, adding Wi-Fi to a doorbell gives it additional functionality so that it can connect up to your smartphone, you can record the people outside, you can do two-way conversations with them, but all that complexity comes at a bit of a cost. Right, I'm freezing this video here because, as you can see, it looks a little bit poor, a little bit blocky. And the reason for that is I had a poor Wi-Fi connection. What you might find is that you get a really good strong Wi-Fi signal in your house, but as soon as you step outside your front door, that signal just drops away completely. And that's what I found in my case. So what I ended up doing was putting a Wi-Fi repeater next to the doorbell, just on the inside of the house, and that boosted the signal up quite well. And that's what I've done in the next shot in the garage. So what I was trying to say before is there's a bit of a problem with the fact that this connects up with a smartphone because quite often your smartphone will be on mute or you might not have it on you, you might have left it in the other room so somebody outside will press the doorbell and it'll ring outside the blue light will go around the uh, button but to the person inside they haven't heard anything now there is a way to get around this and that's to buy an additional device which is an extra ringer that you can plug in a, a wall socket and will ring regardless of whether you've got your smartphone on you. Let's just have a look at that now. So it only took me a couple of days before I realised I really do need this separate chime unit so that I can have it ring when I've not got my phone nearby. And notice on the side of the box here it says uh, to let you know when you have a visitor even if your phone is in the other room, which is the exact issue I was having. Oh. I was having it when it was muted of course as well but anyway same reason now notice this is an international type plug starts off with a us one but we can put a uk one on here or a euro plug so it's just the same device sold all around the world and all that does is plug into your wall socket you connect it up to your network using the app just like you did with the bell you can give it a name and you can adjust the volume on it and it'll play the same ringtones as the app does So in my opinion, unless you can always guarantee that you've got your phone with you, that's whether you're in the shower or in the garden or whatever, and you always have the sound switched on, and I think the Ring Chime unit is pretty much an essential accessory if you're going to buy the main Ring doorbell. Now, if someone rings your doorbell at 10 o'clock at night, you might want to see who that person is before you open the door. So let's see how well the camera performs in the dark. Okay, so this is a test of the low light performance of the camera and as you can see you're able to make out who I am which is something that I can't really do because it's pretty much pitch black in here the only reason that you can see me is because this device has an infrared LED on it which is illuminating the scene which is something the camera can pick up but I can't so this enables you to see who's pressed your doorbell whether it's day or night so everything seems to be working pretty well and therefore you might be wondering why I decided in the end that this product wasn't the one for me. I think I'd better do some explaining. The main issue that I've had with the ring doorbell is the delay between the person outside pressing the button and the person getting a notification or a ring inside the house. Let's just test it out now. And that is far too long. Now, one of the problems with that delay is the person outside, when they press the button, they get an immediate ring, but you don't hear it immediately inside. It's only outside that it's ringing. Now, it could take perhaps another 30 seconds or so for you to answer it, in which time they're unable to press that button again. It doesn't ring for a second time for them. So they're a little bit confused outside as well. Now, to some people, that amount of delay on a doorbell ringer might be totally acceptable, and that's fine if it is. It's just in my situation, my elderly neighbour had fallen down the stairs. They'd stumbled around to my house, 
they'd press the doorbell and it had been chucking down with rain and they'd been stood there for about a minute and a half before I knew they were even there, which just seemed a little bit not on really. Now I've got an idea as to why there's this delay on the doorbell and I think when you run it off batteries it goes to sleep to reserve power so if you don't use it overnight which of course you generally wouldn't do the first person that rings it in the morning is going to get this big long delay. The next person that rings it you get a pretty much instantaneous ring and I think that's because it's now woken up negotiated its IP address and it's now properly on your network and it'll stay there for perhaps a few hours or so before it goes to sleep again. Just a theory but it might explain why when you look through the Amazon reviews you get wildly different reports. Some people have experiences like mine with this big long delay then other people say there's no delay for them at all. I think maybe some people that aren't experiencing a problem perhaps they're wiring it into their existing power supply and therefore it's powered all the time and the people experiencing the delay maybe they're running it off batteries it's all just a theory but I'm not alone in this there are other people in the same boat as myself very quickly apologies for the clicking on the audio not my fault the original files don't have it in it only occurs once they're imported into iMovie therefore there's a bug in iMovie there's nothing I can do about it sorry let's move on Right, next thing, let's go through some potential questions answered preemptively. The first one is, a lot of people want to know, could you turn on the camera if you just want to see what's going on outside? Well, unfortunately, you can't do that. It has to be activated from the outside by someone either pushing the bell or triggering the motion activation. Now, one thing the missus really didn't like about this was when you press the button, you got that chime outside, so the whole street knew that someone was pressing your doorbell. She thought that was a bit over the top. Well, unfortunately, you can't turn that off. However, it doesn't make a noise if someone triggers the motion activation it's only if they actually press the button and of course I know people are going to ask can you do this on 3G or 4G now I mentioned it a couple of times in the video but yes if you're away from the house and you've got your phone with you and someone presses your doorbell you can communicate with them over a mobile network however the Wi-Fi does have to be on in your house for the device to actually function it will ring a manual old-fashioned doorbell if you've got one wired up to it even if your Wi-Fi is down but of course I don't have one of those now remember the chime unit from earlier on and the fact that it can ring even when your phone's on mute or do not disturb. Well, of course, sometimes you don't want to hear things. And I just got thinking about this. What would happen if the wind chime sound for the motion activation got activated but at two in the morning and woke me up? I mean, that'd freak me out. Am I supposed to go down and have a look to see what's there? Maybe it's just a cat walking past. But the idea that it could go off at any time really started to play on my mind a little bit. Now the delay that I was experiencing with the bell push also occurs with the motion activation. So when you look back at the footage of the previous events, quite often you'll just see an empty drive because the postman's been able to go up to the house, post the letters through the letterbox and walk off before the things even started recording. Now one of the main selling features is the fact that you can appear that you're at home when you're not actually there and that's a good security feature because quite often a burglar will ring a doorbell first to see if there's anyone in. I'm fine with all that but I could also imagine that this could lead to some rather awkward exchanges and I've got a friend along to help me demonstrate this. Huh, that's weird. It's ringing outside. This is taking forever. Hello there. Uh, can I help? Oh, uh, hi. I, I thought I was ringing a doorbell. Yeah, it is a doorbell. Uh, it's also a two-way intercom, though. Oh, that's, uh, handy. Anyway, I've got a parcel here for a uh, techno man. Yeah, that's uh, that's tech moan, but but I'm not actually in. Oh, that's uh, very funny. Um, can you please open the door? No, honestly, I'm I'm not really in. I know it kind of looks like I am, and that's the point. But on this occasion, I'm not. I'm about thirty miles away, in some sort of American themed diner. Um, is there any chance you can leave the parcel with a neighbour? Yeah, that's what we always do when someone isn't in, but usually it's a much quicker process than this needlessly drawn out nonsense. Yeah, that'd be great. If you'd leave it next door, I'll pick it up when I get home. Thanks. By your command, future boy. Hailing frequencies closed.
Well, that was a colossal waste of time. Just put me behind on my deliveries now. What a so I came to the realisation that I wasn't too interested in the idea of talking to someone who was outside my house when I wasn't actually inside the house. And then, of course, I'd lost confidence in the doorbell's ability to actually ring and in the motion activation. And then I'd also have to pay another $30 if I wanted to keep the cloud recording going for another year. So I came to the conclusion that this is not a product that's suitable for me and I'm taking it down and just replacing it with a standard old wireless doorbell. It cost me all of about 20 quid. Unfortunately for me, this hasn't worked out. I'm not gonna say it's a rubbish product, nothing like that, don't start jumping on me. It probably works really well for some people and for those people, good on you. I mean, it's a nicely put together piece of equipment, the software's nice, everything seems pretty decent all round really. So if you want a Wi-Fi video doorbell that you want to communicate with people that are outside your house when you're away from your house, then it does seem to work. Uh, but it's just for me, there were too many compromises in the end. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.